Everybody roll down this shit, don't die on me. Uh, this has brakes, it's electric. <laughs> Ever since I got into electric skateboarding and saw advertisements for regenerative braking, I wondered how much does it really charge the batteries? People have asked me about it, and I never had a good answer, so I finally decided to check for myself. The first thing I needed for the test was a very big hill. Fortunately, it's not difficult to find them in Southern California. Here I found a roughly 600 meter stretch of hill that seemed longer than most people would encounter, and long enough that I should see some results. Here's what it looks like going up the mountain. The general idea of this test is to start with a fully charged battery, then go up the hill to run the battery down a bit, and then break the whole way down to see how much charge gets back to the battery. I actually ended up doing this test twice. I'll explain more later. With these ESCs, I don't have a good way to monitor the current draw while I'm riding, so I'm going to measure the voltage at each point as a way of estimating how much the batteries are charged and discharged. I tested two types of ESCs to see if there's much of a difference. The fishboard on the left is using dual VESC ESCs, which are very configurable and popular in the DIY community. The longboard on the right is using the budget dual ESC I got on eBay, and is similar to the ones used on the Meepo board and other affordable boards. So I'm at the bottom of the hill now, I'm about to go up, this is the initial charge. This is one of the cells, they're all about the same pretty close. So you can see the battery's almost fully charged. Alright, let's see if this board can even make it up this hill. I made it to the top of the hill. Now I'm gonna check the battery. The ESC is a bit hot. The motors are hot too. They're hot, but not too hot to touch as you can see, but it definitely feels hot. I can feel some warmth coming from the ESC too. I think the wires actually get kind of warm. So now I'm at the top of the hill and I'm going to go back down and see how much the battery regenerates. Alright, so I'm at full braking now. This might take a while. And look at the scenery. In this test I fully braked the whole way down, so I had plenty of time to admire the scenery. Still full brakes. Alright, I'm just about at the starting point, so I'm gonna stop right about here. I think maybe another foot or two. Alright, I think right about there. Let's see how hot the motors are. Yeah, they're pretty hot. <laughs> I couldn't touch it for a while, but. Well, it does, it starts to get hot. Now let's see what the battery says. Wow, that board made it up fast. It's almost scary fast up the hill. It's definitely a lot faster than the other board. So now I'm going to check the battery and see how much voltage it lost, and then go back down and see how much it regains. Well, the ESC's a little bit warm, but not really. Wow. 
these these motors are like not even they're not even warm they're maybe a tiny bit warm like barely detectable So now I'm at the top of the hill with the longboard and I'm going to go back down and see how much battery was recharged. So I'm at full brake now. Going a little slower than a walking speed. Let's go so slow. Alright, another foot or two. And alright, there. Without even carefully analyzing the numbers, I could already tell the regen brakes basically added nothing. I know a significant amount of energy is lost to things like heat and wind resistance, but it was worse than I expected. Here are the voltages at each point for the board using the VESC ESCs. After going up the hill, the batteries dropped by 1.426 volts. After breaking the whole way down, they only recovered 0.032 volts. These are the VESC settings I used for regenerative braking. Usually the main reason for adjusting these is to control the amount of braking force. Here are the voltages for the longboard using the dual eBay ESC. The results were very similar. 1.746 volts were lost on the way up, and only 0.032 volts were recovered from braking. Here I break down the voltage increases as percentages. The VESC board regenerated about 2.25% of the voltage lost, and the longboard regenerated a bit under 2%. That's really not good. I noticed that when fully braking, the motors sound a bit different, and maybe go into a mode that adds extra braking force using some of the electric energy. So maybe less energy was making it back to the battery. I don't know for sure how these ESCs are designed, so the best way to find out is to just try and see what happens. So I decided to repeat the test while just slowing down instead of fully braking. This is round two, where I'm just going to slow down. So now I'm at the top and I'm going to go back down and see how much gets regenerated by just slowing down. <laughs> As you can see here, just slowing down did much better. In round 2, the VESC board lost 1.809 volts on the way up, and regained 0.269 volts while braking on the way down. The longboard did even better. It lost 1.996 volts on the way up, and regained 0.49 volts on the way down. The improvement is much more noticeable when looking at the percentages. 
The VESC board regained about 15% of the voltage lost, and the long board regained almost 25%. Here you can really see how big the difference was between round 1 when I was fully braking, and round 2 when I was just slowing down. Both ESCs showed a big improvement in round 2. Going up and back down a hill is the best possible scenario, because regenerative braking mostly captures potential energy gained when moving upward against gravity, so the hill test is as good as it'll get. On flat ground, regenerative braking adds very little, because most of the energy is used to overcome factors like rolling friction and wind resistance. Only a bit of energy for momentum can be recovered. After looking at the results, I'm still not sure how much regenerative braking could extend range in practical situations. Although, another important benefit is that it's better that some of the energy gets stored back into the battery, instead of all of it turning into more heat that can damage the electronics and motors. In this experiment, in the best case, which was the longboard, almost 25% of the voltage was recovered, which actually seems pretty good. However, in reality, if you're mostly riding on almost flat ground with occasional hills, I think it's unlikely you'll see a big benefit, but I guess it's nice to have. If you want longer range, I think a bigger battery is probably your best bet. I'd like to hear what you think. Please leave any comments on your experience with regenerative braking. Do you think it adds significantly to the range of your board? Here's one more look at the scenery, and thanks for watching.